Hi micro hunters, Oliver here again and today I'm going to be exploding a few onion cells and it looks pretty cool. This is our subject, okay, so I'll be putting this under the microscope and uh, what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be adding a lot of salt water to the cells and the salt water does the following, it does osmosis, it pulls out the sap of the cell, okay, and then you can see the center of the cell shrinking together, so you can see this quite easily because it's all red. And then I'm going to take the salt water away and I'm going to add some regular water and then the center of the cell, the, the vacuole with the red pigment is going to expand again and then it's going to pop open and that's what we're going to be watching. Okay, so let's get started. And of course the local supermarket is a great source uh, for red onions. Uh, they're not expensive uh, and uh, I bought a whole, whole bag of them and uh, Basically, the first thing that I had to do is remove um, all of the dry external uh, layers. This was not so easy actually because it was quite thick, uh, but uh, then I simply started to cut, uh, cut out a small square. Um, I do not really need more here uh, and uh, of course you do not want to hurt yourself when you do that and you can see the different layers of the onions drop out. This is now the critical part. You use a knife, you cut into the flesh of the onion and you place your thumb over the red part. Okay that's really important because you want to fix the red um, onion uh, cells and then you tear it off and when you do that you actually get a very thin layer of cells. Now some of the cells uh, will break open and are destroyed and you can see that uh, that the cells that are intact they are still red here and, and the cells next to it the ones that are transparent the part of the skin that's transparent this contains uh, the broken cells and these are the cells that we're not going to look at. So I'm going to try it again because uh, the more often you try the more successful you're going to be um, and the same thing here uh, plenty of uh, cells that are still um, intact. I place it on the slide and first of all I have to remove the thick part, um, uh, the fleshy part um, and I'm doing this with a knife. It did not really work very well I have to admit. Um, so I decided to, to change my tools and then to use some scissors. It's actually much easier using scissors um, I found and that's essentially what I did here. I see that I'm kind of shaking as I'm holding the whole thing in front of my camera uh, but actually this was uh, quite Quite okay. Um, you want to place uh, quite a, immediately a cover glass on top because you do not want that the cells dry out. Uh, you simply uh, place a cover glass on top without any mounting media, um, no water added, nothing like this um, and then you try put it directly under the microscope um, and uh, you try to find the part under the microscope uh, where you can actually see the red cells. These are the white ones, uh, the, the ones that are broken open and these cells are now still intact. So I'll be looking at those and I'm adding a drop of saturated salt solution. You simply mix some salt uh, with some tap water um, and it's uh, concentrated, okay? And you can see that it's pulled in beneath the cover glass. So, okay, so well, I actually made myself a little drawing right now um, to show you what is actually happening. This is, of course, uh, the onion cell. And what I have um, out here is a high salt concentration. That's the salt water that I'm adding, of course. Um, and this uh, dark blue line, that is the cell wall. It's a very strong um, yeah, material. It's made of cellulose and it actually gives the cell a lot of strength. So the shape of the cell wall is not really changing a lot. But in the cell I have the red uh, pigment uh, which is uh, surrounded by um, a cell membrane and it's also inside a vacuole. And when I um, add now the high salt uh, concentration to it, what happens is the water starts to move out um, of the cell um, by osmosis. The whole process is called plasmolysis. I don't know why scientists always have to invent some fancy sounding names for all these processes, but the cell becomes plasmalized and uh, this happens quite fast actually. Uh, within a few seconds you can already see this happening. Um, and uh, as a consequence uh, the cell of course so most likely will, will uh, start to die because uh, the water loss is too extreme. But if this does not happen too much, uh, only a little bit, uh, then uh, the um, cell is of course able to recover. But this is basically what happens when plants start to wilt, they start to lower the and everything okay because there's simply not enough pressure inside the cell to actually maintain uh, the plant growing upwards okay. So that is uh, basically the first step uh, that we're going to be doing. We're going to plasmalize the cells. So you'll see the salt water pulling in uh, from the right and as it passes the cells you can see that the cells immediately start to plasmalize. 
So you can see the central part shrink together. Here a little bit bigger, you can see the central cell actually the central part shrinking uh, together. Um, and uh, that is actually a sign that it loses a lot of water. And uh, this is now the final state and there is no more change happening so I decided to have a closer look specifically at those places where the cell membrane still touches the cell wall so they are still connected there um, and uh, it's quite well visible here as well okay um, so this is basically these are the places where adjacent cells communicate with each other called plasmodesmata and of course you can also reverse the process now um, and what I'll be doing is I'll be removing the salt water I'll be using some tissue paper to remove the salt water and I'll be adding a uh, normal tap water to it and of course the process will become reserved reserved reversed of course and uh, the water will rush into the cell um, the red part uh, of the cell the central part will start to expand again um, and uh, what happens then is is something quite interesting for whatever reason it's not able to expand to the full size of the cell I have not really figured out why this is the case um, and in any case uh, the membrane and or the vacuole are actually going to pop I think it's actually the vacuole that pops because I have seen it happening um, in one cell on several places this could be an indication that there are actually several uh, smaller vacuoles inside one cell um, and then the red contents uh, the pigment is spilled in, into the cell wall and you can actually see it diffuse and distribute inside the cell it almost looks like the cell is internally bleeding to death oh I know not a nice thought but it still looks kind of cool on the left side with some tissue paper I'm removing the salt water and on the right side I'm adding some tap water so I'm going to fill up the cells again with water and here we go again water passing over the cells and you can immediately see that they become rounder and that they start to swell and now this is where the fun starts and in order to increase the dramatic effect I'm gonna make a little plop every time when a cell explodes just for the fun of it
So and what I want to do now is I simply want to give you a short uh, look behind the scenes. Uh, maybe you're interested uh, in how my lab, my home lab looks like after a few hours um, of uh, microscopy work on onion cells. As you can see, a lot of interesting things to discover in onion cells. I hope you liked this video. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I want to remind you that I have a second uh, microscopy channel. The links are below where um, I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, the technical aspects of microscopes in my other uh, channel. There is also a microscopy shop that you can visit. So if you need any uh, spare parts or any accessories, uh, please, please visit that shop. And uh, for today, I just want to wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting and bye-bye. Uh,